Hello Star Wars Rebels fans, my name's Joel Robinson and this is Star Wars Rebels Viewer Response. So last Sunday I posted a theorycrafting video in which I discussed the identity of Star Wars Rebels' most mysterious character, Fulcrum. This led to a huge outpouring of comments, two of which I want to discuss with you today. Needless to say, there will be huge spoilers ahead, so if you haven't seen the episode, this would be a good time to watch one of my other videos. Isaiah Phillips commented on Fulcrum's identity being Ahsoka by saying, It feels too obvious, and too good to be true, but I sure hope it is. It would be a very smart move by the producers. It would pull in the Clone Wars fans, who are hesitant to watch Rebels. Isaiah, I agree wholeheartedly with what you're saying. It does seem like the clues were hidden too clearly in plain sight. Although it does make me wonder whether Dave Filoni is just doing this all as a bluff to drag our attention away from something bigger. And to be honest, I don't know. But tell me down in the comments whether you think that the Star Wars Rebels writers are trying to drag our attention away from something bigger. And if so, then what? Our next comment comes from Henry Hammond, who I must say wrote the most amazing and detailed essay about Fulcrum that I've ever seen. Seriously, it's incredible. I can't read it all right now, but I'll hit the high points and link to the full uh, essay down in the description. Starting, Henry writes, Whoever Fulcrum is, they would have to have access to Imperial Intel on a regular basis. And while Ahsoka, with her training and force abilities, might be able to pull that off, I would think it unlikely that Tograta would have an easy time infiltrating the human-centric Empire. While you are correct that a Tograta would have a difficult time infiltrating the Empire, Fulcrum's not necessarily directly involved in spying. Just as Darth Vader has military officials under him, like the Inquisitors, who do much of his work, Fulcrum could have military officials under her, who do the spying and supply intel to her. For example, it is very possible that the Fulcrum could be gaining intel by utilization of Bothan spies, who we know from Mon Moth of Musk comments and Return of the Jedi were deeply involved in spying for the Rebel Alliance. Many Bothans died to bring us this information. Next, Henry writes, I think all our internet fanboys have overlooked another possibility. First, look at Fulcrum's vehicle, or Carillion Corvette, which is not Tantiv IV. Secondly, while the voice could be interpreted as Eckstein, it could also be likened to that of Catherine Tabor, the voice of Princess Leia in the Force Unleashed series. We know Leia was a member of the Imperial Senate, and in the old EU, she and Winter did a lot of covert work for the Rebellion in the early days. I believe that she would be about Ezra's age in this time period, but I still think it's highly likely that this could be Leia that we're dealing with. Henry, those are a lot of excellent thoughts. So let me start going through uh, one by one. So looking at the Corellian Corvette, it is true that this is not the Tantive IV, but that would give me even greater suspicion that this would not be Leia. We know that the Tantive IV is the ship utilized by Alderaan's royal family, which includes Princess Leia. So if Leia was using a Corellian Corvette, she would most likely use her royal family's ship, just like she did in A New Hope. Continuing, yes, Catherine Tabor could be the voice of Fulcrum we hear, but we must take a wider look at this. The role of Fulcrum is uncredited. They name no actor with the role. Why would this role be uncredited? Possibly because it's too minor of a role. This is unlikely because they've given actors credit for even smaller roles. The other option is the writers do not want to give away the actor's identity because it would spoil a later reveal of the character. If it was Catherine Tabor, as you suggest, they could give her credit for the role without giving away the character's identity, because she is not synonymous with one role. Whereas, if they accredited Ashley Eckstein with the role, fans would immediately think of Ahsoka, thereby spoiling the mystery. From a business perspective, it makes a lot of sense. Keep the mystery alive and people will continue to talk about it. Kinda like we are right now. And therein lies the greatest reason for Ahsoka being Fulcrum, which I didn't really touch on in my last video. From a business perspective, it just makes sense. Once Disney bought Lucasfilm, one of the first things they were tasked with doing is creating a cohesive canon universe. Thus, the expanded universe was canned for the sake of keeping everything cohesive between Return of the Jedi and Episode 7, The Force Awakens, as well as subsequent movies that follow. That means every book, every movie, every Christmas special was all thrown out. So what was the one thing besides the movies that Lucasfilm kept canon? Their Star Wars The Clone Wars series. This is interesting, because at the time of the EU destruction, The Clone Wars was already finished. No new episodes were ever going to be made. So this raises the question, why keep the show canon? What event, or more importantly character, would make the Lucasfilm staff want to keep this show in the official Star Wars universe? The answer, once again, is Ahsoka. 
Ahsoka is the only character that would have a major effect upon the Star Wars canon. Before the Clone Wars, no one would have dreamed Anakin would have a Padawan. She is the prized creation of Dave Filoni, and when given the opportunity to have her die in Order 66, he fought with Lucasfilm to save her, and I do not believe he would fight so hard to save this character if she was simply going to be a forgotten part of the finished Clone Wars series. Clearly, he saved her for a reason, and so it makes sense that he would reestablish her as a part of the new canon in his new animated series, Rebels. So there you go, mystery solved. Well, maybe. But hopefully we'll know the truth on January 5th, when Star Wars Rebels season begins again. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure you comment down below and share your thoughts with me. Who knows, I may include you in my next fan response video. And whatever you do, don't forget to subscribe.